Hi everybody, welcome back to Sunshine Soap and Candle Company. Today I'm excited to be bringing you another bath bomb video. And today we're gonna be making some really cute donut bath bombs complete with icing and sprinkles. If you like bath bombs, you likely have seen this cute donut trend going around for quite some time now. So today I'm gonna to be sharing with you my version of the donut bath bomb using the bath bomb press. You can find one of these bath bomb presses at thebathbombpress.com and I'll go ahead and link their website in the description below for you. Not to worry if you don't have a bath bomb press or you're not gonna be buying one. You can, with this recipe, you can hand press your bath bombs as I've shown in some previous videos. And you also can find donut shaped molds that you can hand press. So in this video today, I'm gonna to be sharing with you my full step-by-step -step visual process and tutorial of just how to put together these really cute donut bath bombs. And if you would like the full written recipe and tutorial, detailed written tutorial with percentages, go ahead and head on over to my Patreon campaign where you can unlock this recipe along with now almost three years of archive recipes for just one $5 pledge. In addition to my $5 tier, I have four other tiers that you can take advantage of over on my Patreon campaign, each with their own unique benefits. And we offer wonderful things like live classes, live monthly hangouts, monthly gift packages. We've built a wonderful community over there. I really hope that you'll check it out. It's a wealth of information. And I'll go ahead and place the link in the description box below. All right, let's make some really cute donut bath bombs. Okay, so before we get started, I'm gonna go ahead and talk to you about my dry ingredients. I'm gonna show you what we'll be using today. I have everything pre-measured out just to help this video be a little bit more streamlined. And then as I'm adding stuff in, I will talk to you about why we're using each ingredient. But here I have a KitchenAid mixer bowl full of um, sifted baking soda. And then I have my citric acid right here. In these containers, these smaller containers, I have some cream of tartare, and that is this one here. I have some cornstarch. I have some SLSA. This is gonna be your bubbling component. I have some kale and clay, and I have some buttermilk powder. All right, we're gonna break this up into two phases, the dry phase, and then we're gonna be adding in the wet ingredients. So there's two phases to this recipe and then we're gonna press the bath bombs. So I'm gonna take you over to my KitchenAid mixer and show you the next step. Okay, so we're over here at the KitchenAid mixer and what I'm gonna be using today for color is a hot pink lake color. And I got this from Fizz Fairy. I like to use water soluble dyes in my bath bombs because they don't stick to the tub. Um, you can use micas if you like. However, it's really important that you include a polysorbate 80 because micas can stick to the sides of your bathtub and stain your bathtub. So I'm just taking three or four kind of heaping spoonfuls. This is probably not even a teaspoon, but I'm putting heaping teaspoons in here. So um, you can put as much color as you like. And it's gonna show up pretty bright pink until we add the rest of the ingredients. And then I have a little bit of water in this tiny beaker, probably a teaspoon. It's really important not to get your baking soda too wet at this point, so a little bit. Start with a little bit of water, about a teaspoon of water, and we're gonna use this water to activate our lake color. And this will dye the baking soda, but it'll also dye the whole batch. So we're gonna go ahead and turn this on. Okay, and here's just my baking soda now, all colored with that pink dye. And as you can see, it's just slightly damp, the baking soda. And we're gonna start adding in the rest of the ingredients. So the first thing we're gonna be putting in here is some SLSA. Again, this is the bubbling agent. We are making a bubbling fizzing bath bomb today. So this is a surfactant that creates lots of um, bubbles and people use it in bubble baths and shampoos. It's pretty gentle. So we're gonna be using the SLSA as our bubbling agent. Okay, 
the next thing we're going to be adding in is the cornstarch. Now we're using cornstarch to help harden up the bath bombs. The dry ingredients do a couple of things. They harden up the bath bombs and then they also have some skin loving properties. So the cornstarch is going to act sort of like a clay in this instance except not as heavy as a clay. And it's going to help stick all of our wet and dry ingredients together and it does also feel nice in the bath. It makes your skin nice and smooth. So we're going to go ahead and add in our cornstarch. all of these ingredients dry ingredients separately I find that it helps the mixture set up to the right consistency at the very end now if you don't have a KitchenAid mixer you could just use an electric handheld mixer and a large mixing bowl or you could really you could mix everything by hand or with a whisk in a large mixing bowl the next thing we're going to be adding in here is some cream of tartare. Now cream of tartare is also going to help harden up the bath bomb, but it does give the water a little bit of foaming action. This is something that I really find that I can't do without in my bath bomb recipes. I use it every time. It hardens up, it's lightweight, and it also helps with the frothy and the foaming capabilities of the bath bomb. So we're going to go ahead and put that in. All right, so the next dry ingredient we're adding in is the kale and clay. Now we're using clay here for a couple different reasons. It's going to help again to create a really hard bath bomb that's not going to be fragile and fall apart, but also in your bath water, it gives some detoxing properties just like any clay does. It has great detoxing properties. So we're going to go ahead and add in our clay. And then the last dry ingredient we're going to be adding in is some buttermilk powder. Now buttermilk powder is great for the skin. It adds really nice skin soothing, softening properties to your bath water. Also with any milk, it's got alpha hydroxy acids, which is a mild exfoliant. And it just actually also helps with the bubbling. Buttermilk on its own has a little bit of bubbling property. Buttermilk powder when you put it into the bath. So this does help extend the bubble and foam of the bath bomb as well as exfoliate, gently exfoliate and um, soften your skin. So we're gonna go ahead and add this in. All right, I lied when I said that was the end of the dry ingredients. We do have all of this citric acid, but we're not gonna actually be adding the citric acid into the dry phase. We're gonna wait to add this in until after we add in our wet ingredients. I don't know what it is. This is a technique I learned a little while back. If you add your citric acid in now, you're gonna have issues with your bath bomb not setting up, not holding together. It dries out too quickly. If you add your wet ingredients in and then you add in the citric acid, your bath bomb mixture won't, you won't risk it fizzing or foaming up because this is gonna be part of your fizzing action. The citric acid and the baking soda combined are what make the bath bomb fizz. So when you add in your wet ingredients, sometimes you risk if the citric acid's already in there, activating the bath bomb. Um, in this case, when you add it last, that doesn't happen. So we're gonna go ahead and add in our wet ingredients, and they include, in this beaker already measured out and melted down, we have some polysorbate 80. And the reason why we're adding polysorbate 80 is because it emulsifies the oils in the bath water so nothing sticks to the side of the tub and everything just goes down the drain and you don't end up with an oily bathtub or oily skin. We have shea butter in here. Shea butter is a great thing to add to your bath water. It just makes it feel so rich and decadent. We have grapeseed oil in here which is a really good oil um, for skin care. It's got antioxidants and it's just wonderful. And then we also have some fragrance oil in here. We are using strawberry fragrance oil and it's the same one I've been using for the strawberry themed videos. We're gonna be making strawberry donuts. So this is the strawberry fragrance oil from Brambleberry. And then in, in this separate beaker over here, I have a little bit of um, rubbing alcohol, 99%. It's very important to use 99% rubbing alcohol because that means it's 99% alcohol and 1% water. This will not set your bath bombs off. If you're using water, you do risk activating your bath bombs once that citric acid goes in. So I do suggest using rubbing alcohol. So we're gonna go ahead and add in our wet ingredients. 
Okay, we're ready to go ahead and add in the citric acid. And as you can see, the mixture looks damp. And after we add in the citric acid, it will look a little bit damp, but it will have more of a powdery appearance. So we're gonna go ahead and add in the citric acid. Okay, we are ready for the next step here, which is to go ahead and press our bath bombs. And I, I do apologize for this awkward angle. I do find in my workspace, there's no great way for me to film the pressing part of it. So I'm trying to give you the best angle possible. Um, so what we have here is the bath bomb press and it is hooked up to a air compressor and the air compressor is set at 65 PSI. Now that's what you want to have it set at for this type of bath bomb. I'm putting in the top part of the donut mold and I've been experimenting with this mold now for a little while so I wanted to give you some tips and tricks on how to make it successful. Um, so this is the bottom part of the donut mold and it just sets inside of this other piece. And let's go ahead and get started. All right, and I do have my bath bomb press sitting on top of a food tray because my bath bomb recipe, I don't pack it down and you're gonna see a lot of powder coming out of it as it presses and it, this just helps catch the majority of it. And then here I have my gorgeous, gorgeous pink, beautiful pink um, bath bomb powder and we're ready to go. So this should be kind of powdery looking, um, not too wet. And when you grab a little handful of it, it should stick together easily like that. I'm not squeezing hard at all. So what we're gonna do, this is exactly how I do it to make it stick. So I'm just gonna take my donut and I'm just loosely packing in my powder. And I notice I'm not pushing it down. I'm just kind of putting it in and then smoothing out the top. Now, this is important because this is something that I learned when I was doing this, um, is that the bath bomb press, up here the top piece has a hole so that it can create the hole for the donut. The powder can clog up this hole pretty quickly and get compacted. And then when that happens, your bath bombs crack and they don't set up because the mold can't go all the way down. It stops because this hole gets clogged. And so what happens is the bath bomb just doesn't come together the right way. So one way to help rectify that is to just give it a little bit of help by putting your finger right here in the middle and kind of creating a little space for that top piece to not get clogged. Now, the bath bomb press has two toggles. It has a toggle here and a toggle here. You can't do anything with one toggle. Both have to be engaged. You do this one first and then you do this one up here. I'm gonna move my hand out of the way. And there you go. And there's one, and this is how we do it. I just grab my tray, again, trying to show you the best angle here. I do take my spoon and just kind of tap around the edges just to get it a smoother transition out of the mold. I twist the bottom, and then I hold it over my powder and it will start to slide out all by itself. And there you go. A beautiful, perfect bath bomb donut. Aren't those adorable? So I'm just gonna go ahead and put it on this food tray. And then I'll press a few more for you. I just think these are so, so cute. So again, you're just gonna set this on here gently, not packing, you're just kind of loosely putting it into the top and wiping off the excess, creating a little hole there. And then if you do notice that your bath bombs all of a sudden in this process are not coming together, like the one I just showed you, or they're cracking, check the hole up here and if it's clogged up, take it out and push it out with um, some sort of rod. And there's another beautiful 
donut. Twist. And voila. Such a cute, cute shape for a bath bomb. Alright everybody, here's a little bit of a close-up of how cute these turn out. Now as you can see, I have 12 donuts sitting here, but this recipe will actually make you 14 donuts. I just didn't have room for them all on this tray. And the 14th donut is a little smaller than the rest of them, so we like to use the 14th donut here just for home use, but these are so cute. So next up, I'm going to show you how to put some icing on these and make them look super edible and some sprinkles. Be right back. All right, so we're getting ready to make the icing. This is super easy. It's just a combination of cocoa butter and baking soda. And I'm just using the cocoa butter um, pastilles from Brambleberry. These are deodorized, meaning they don't have that like chocolatey smell. If you don't get them deodorized, they will smell like chocolate. So all I'm gonna do here is weigh out my wafers and then I'm going to melt this down. Once this is melted down, then I'm going to be adding in my baking soda. So I'll bring you right back to show you that process. Okay, so here I have my melted down cocoa butter and all I'm going to do is start incorporating in some baking soda. Now, I'm just going to let you know here a little tip is start out with a 50-50 um, ratio of melted cocoa powder to baking soda and just slowly incorporate it in. This is going to make a thick kind of icing. Um, I'll show you the consistency when everything gets added in and you just want to kind of break up any lumps that that go in there with the baking soda but you're going to start out with about a 50-50 mix, 50-50 ratio of cocoa butter to baking powder and keep your baking powder handy because if it's not thick enough you're going to want to add keep your baking soda handy because if it's not thick enough you're going to want to add in more baking soda until your icing is the consistency that you want it. So I'm going to go ahead and continue to incorporate this in to the mixture and I'll bring you back when my mixture looks like icing. Okay, so I think we are just about thick enough to go ahead and glaze these bath bombs. However, if we're not, I'm gonna stop and go ahead and add some more um, baking soda to this mixture. This is more than a 50-50 mix at this point. I did go ahead and sprinkle in little bits at a time until I felt I was at the right consistency. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and test it out right now. Okay, so also you need to know that you have to let your bath bombs set up for a day before you do this. Don't try to take them straight off the rack and do this. These I made yesterday, so I'm gonna be showing you how to do this. So just go ahead and dip your bath bomb into the mixture. Come up, let the excess drip off and kind of dry a little bit. And then I'm going to go ahead and dip it again and see what we have. Oh, 
Okay, see that? Now we're close. I'm actually gonna go ahead and add a little bit more um, baking soda to this mixture just to get this slightly thicker. All right, so we're gonna try again now with another bath bomb. I think we're ready to go. And all I'm gonna do is dip. Then I'm gonna come up, let the excess drip off. I'm gonna dip again. Do the same thing, just kinda let the excess drip off. And I'm actually gonna dip a third time Then I'm going to take the donut, show you what this looks like, and I'm just going to put sprinkles on one half of it, like that. Is that not the cutest thing you ever did see? All right, I'm going to go ahead and set this one here, and then we'll continue on with this process. As the icing dries, it will dry to a white. And I'll show you what that looks like in just a few minutes. everybody the icing has been setting up on the bath bomb donuts now for a few hours and I just wanted to give you a close-up and see what they look like they are absolutely adorable so you saw me put the white icing on these strawberry ones and then I had another set of raspberry ones with the pinkish purple icing on top I just think they are so so cute um, they definitely look edible so be careful when you're packaging these that you make sure that people know that they cannot eat them. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and leave you with a demonstration of how these work in the bathtub.